One awesome thing about substance materials is that you can create your own using your own maps. And it gives you a lot of power because if you're good at designing them, then you can have all those parameters available to you and you can adjust them just like we were with those pre-supplied ones. So when if you download Substance Designer, which is again from the alleg algorithmic webpage, you can download something called Substance Designer and you can get a 30 day free trial of it. And what you can do in here is design your own PBR materials and you can expose the parameters of those materials so that like we were in Max where we were doing those sliders and it was changing colors and intensity of the mortar and all that kind of stuff, you can expose those kind of things so that yours will also have that those custom functions in it. So it's cool. They're great for real time again as well. But they work in 3D Studio Max as I just showed you with other substance materials that are shipped with Max. So if you go to File, New Substance after you open this up, you can go here and just name it Udemy Students. If I can spell and type, okay. We can set the resolution here, that's fine. And then just set it to this one right here, the physically based PBR metallic roughness workflow, okay. And what that will do is make the maps that you need. So metallic map, height map, same as displacement, roughness, normal, and base color, okay. So those are the maps that it's gonna be outputting right there. Now we are gonna tell it on the left side exactly what to make those maps before they are output. So first we need to run it through a base material. You can bring up all the nodes that are possible here. Think of this like the slate editor. It's just a node-based material editor kind of thing. Shader editor, really. So hit spacebar and it brings up every node you can use. We wanna type in base material. And this is not gonna be an exhaustive tutorial of how to use Substance Designer, but it's gonna show you the principles, show you how cool it is so that you can run with it on your own and possibly design your own PBR materials that you can use in V-Ray for your architectural renderings. Okay, so we have this base material. From here, we just link the base material to all these different maps. And you can see how it's doing all of them at one time. To do that, you need to make sure that here, instead of standard, where it's linking one at a time, we need to tell it that we're linking an entire material. And then we can just do that and it goes to all the right places. Then it gives us a preview down here of what we're doing. So inside the base material, we can do things like change the roughness. Okay. We can change the height, but that's not gonna do anything because there's no map attached to it. We can change the metallic value to be non-metallic. Remember, that's like a switch on and off, basically. So there's those. You can turn up and down the grunge on the map. So this is nice, obviously. It's grungy material, looking great. But none of this is really helpful unless we wanted like a grungy metal looking material. What we really need is maps that will input on this side and then go through the base material to these outputs here. So what we want to do is just do user to find maps, drop that down and just put all these to true or whichever ones you want to be true. And then you have uh, little nodes over here that you can now drag to. Okay, so now you can import all your maps into here by just dragging and dropping them. I grabbed these maps here for some corrugated, some old rusty corrugated metal. And these are downloaded from Megascans again. Just import the resources. Okay, and there's other places to get PBR photo scanned maps as well. I'm going to show you that in some upcoming lectures. But you need to get all these proper maps. And the same company that makes this Substance Designer also makes a program that will take your regular bitmaps and generate all these maps for you from that automatically. And it also does a little bit of automatic tiling, which is cool. So check that out as well if you need a way to generate all these maps. Okay, all my maps are now in here, and they're also over here under resources. All those maps are there. Okay, so we can line up the base color with the albedo map. We can take this one. Let's delete these so we know which ones are which. I don't wanna get confused here. I'm gonna do them one at a time for us. Okay, so there's that one. Now we can grab the displacement map, put it in here and put it to the height map right there. We can grab the normal map, drop it in here, put it to the normal slot, 
just like that. Okay, and you can see our material is already coming together down here. Okay, obviously it's too reflective, too not rough enough. So let's get the roughness in there and link that up to the roughness. Should change. Actually, it stays pretty shiny still. Let's get the glossiness in there. Okay, and right now we're just kind of recreating that basic material, but I'm gonna show you what you can do with this that makes it better. Oh, we don't need the glossy one. Metallic, what we can do with metallic, there is no metallic map, so what we wanna do is just go here and say that this one, the metallic one, is not user-defined with a map, so turn that to false, and then we'll set it to metallic 255, so this is a metal material. It's corrugated metal. So the only one left is ambient occlusion, which we can put right here. We'll drag it to there. There's our ambient occlusion. Okay, so I'm looking at that thinking that's way too shiny. So what can we do? Well, in the roughness slot here, we can put a levels here, right in there by clicking on it, and then and then typing in levels and it will put that node in there. Okay, now in the levels we can adjust like normal. So now before this roughness map comes into our final output, it's going through a levels first. You can see it in 2D here. Okay, and one important element that I forgot to mention is that you need to put a grayscale conversion here because unless it knows this is grayscale, which it didn't, it thought it was color, we can change it to grayscale here, or you can do a grayscale conversion along the way somewhere. So that's why it wasn't adjusting in the 3D, and that's why these are dotted red, because they're not working. But we can turn this to grayscale here, then this will update, and now when we adjust the levels, it will update here in the 3D. So with our levels, we can now adjust and you will see it adjust there, okay? So as we get more white, it's actually getting less shiny. As we get more black, it gets more shiny. Okay, so I think right about there is right. That's cool. Now, what you can do is make these different levels exposed. So it's really this one that we're adjusting. That's the most important element going on here. So we should just expose this one value here, expose, and we can call it, we can call it metal roughness, okay? Now that will be one of those sliders back in 3D Studio Max, and we'll just be able to slide it up and down, and we will be able to adjust that in 3D Studio Max with a slider. Okay, so there it is. So what else would we want to do to this material? We could add some additional grunge onto it. So, well, these ones need to be changed to grayscale. That's one thing that we need to do. So these are all working properly. Now that material is doing what it's supposed to, looks great. So say we wanted to change the color. What we could do is do a uniform color on the top of this. Actually, we could do like a multiply or a blend here. So blend. Okay, and then we can just take this as a foreground color and this as a background color, blend them together using this node. This one we could make whatever color we want, like that. So now we have yellow corrugated metal, orange corrugated metal, and then in here we can change the opacity to be whatever we want, like 0.5. This is another thing we could expose. So what we could do is say, expose this and call it color intensity. Color intensity, okay. And then this one, the hue, we could do, we could expose the hue and call it tint, color tint, okay. So those are now fully adjustable in Max when we go back in there. We can also use things like masks. Okay, Substance Designer comes with this big library of things over here that we can just use. Okay, if you go over here into generators, there's a noise generator. You can take these nice grunge maps here, drag them in. Okay, you could use that as 
the mask between the two different colors, right? That's pretty nice. You can up the contrast up and down here. You can invert it. Okay, you can, you can see how you might want to expose some of these parameters too. So I think this one, if we exposed it, call it um, tint grunge amount. Okay. All right. So basically, there you go. You can you can go on forever and ever and make all sorts of blends and combinations. There's all these different nodes that you can fool with. If you hit spacebar, you can see all of them. Okay. And chances are, if you're thinking of something you want to be able to do, it's got that ability in here. You can even take your black and white maps and convert them using a node to normal maps. You can do all sorts of different things. So you can get pretty complicated, combine different bitmaps together using masks, all sorts of different things. And it can essentially be kind of like that Quixel mixer thing if you use all these nodes right. Not nearly as intuitive as that one. But this one gives you a lot more control over the finished product while you're in your end end user program. So like in 3D Studio Max or in Unreal Engine. So this you would just package together and I'll show you what it looks like inside of Max. And what you want to do to be able to use it in either Unreal Engine or 3D Studio Max is doing this, right clicking on your, your package that you created and say publish SBSAR file, okay? Okay, back in 3D Studio Max, this is what it looks like. There's my SBSAR file loaded right there, Udemy students, SBSAR. I did the same thing we did before with the substance to V-Ray plugin there. It puts in all these nodes for me, but all I really need to do, all that's doing is translating it into a V-Ray material for me. All I need to do is adjust here and you can see my metal roughness, my color intensity, my balance. One of those didn't get named right, but let's uh, adjust it and see what we get. We don't want that, we want this one. Open the preview window, make it nice and big. Let's make the coordinates go to 10 by 10. Okay, and if we do the metal roughness thing here, we'll see it adjust as we slide. Okay, color intensity, we can turn that down, or we can turn it way up, and then change the balance. Okay, so everything that we expose is now available to us here. And now it's almost all orange. Okay, so there you go. So obviously you can make a much more interesting substance material than that if you use your imagination. But that's the basics of how that works. And I'm sure the wheels in your head are turning and you're thinking, ooh, I could do some pretty cool things with that. You're right, you really can. And again, when you apply it to VR and uh, real-time rendering as well, this becomes a really powerful tool because it will translate directly to both programs. So there you have it. That's Substance. That's another cool way to make physically accurate and photorealistic looking materials. We're going to talk more in the next lectures about how to just use straight up maps and custom paint jobs for your materials to make things absolutely specific to your scene and customize for, I think, the best results when it comes to photorealism.